He may not be the fastest driver, but he's there all the time, and that's why he's currently on 201 points and only 22 points away from Reina. He's going to need a bit of good fortune if he wants to win this race, but Mikhail is going to have to have someone bigger than life themselves watching down on him as he goes purple in Sector 1, improving by one, uh, well, one and a half tenths there. Mikhail needs to win this race with fastest lap and have it so Reyna does not score any points, whether that means DNFing or just finishing outside the top 10. He needs that to happen if he does want to win this championship. Because at the moment he's 26 points behind the Argentinian, who has won three races, come second twice, and come third three times as well to make that two, four, six, eight podiums across the season. Forrest Jump hasn't won a race this season, but he has come second, one, two, three, four, five times, and been third two more as well, giving him seven podiums this season. And Mikhail won three, second twice, and third twice. That brings us to this race. Mikhail goes even faster with a blistering lap time. Ah, oh, out. We've waited 14, 15 races for this to happen, but we're finally here. The finale, the Ultima. It's five red lights. And away we go for one last time this season. I can't see who's got away well, but the camera switched now and we do. Mikhail gets away very well indeed into turn one, and he leads quite substantially ahead of Rayner. Beast plays P3. Marshy with a good start up to P4. Forrest jump dropping down to P5. Coy's up to P6, shot maker down in P7, and Creative Coconut down in P8, and Syndra dropping down the order as well. Mikhail, decent lead then, going through the first few corners. Any contact coming on, Coy's going around the outside of Forest Jump, and it's falling apart a little bit for the Red Bull driver. He gets overtaken once more by the McLaren as well. Good move on the outside there. And Forest Jump looked like he went a bit wide there. Young leader down to 12, Tesco meal deal down to 14, and it looks like the driver's gone around. We go further up the order, and Rayner, I think he's just going to be happy to sit in P2, because that's all he needs to do. Beast plays, though, is going to keep the pressure up on the Ferrari driver to see if he can finally break that Mercedes curse on the final race. Marshy, P4 in that Aston Martin, and it's been a really decent start, but it's been a really good start for the McLaren of Coys. He didn't really get a very good qualifying in at all, because he DNF'd early on. Does he have some sort of pace? Could he even snatch the win? I mean... It's ambitious and he does make a little bit of a mistake there, but he's looking very pacey. Forrest Jump coming back at him though, and he's got a nice run on the Papaya Orange McLaren. It switches to the outside and going into turn 27, the final corner of this racetrack. Forrest Jump's going to find his way around the outside and back up into fifth. Good move. The McLaren though gets a slipstream down all the way to turn one. And will he be able to re-overtake the Red Bull driver? We're going to ride we're going to ride with this battle all the way into the left-hander on the inside, but he can't keep it. Forrest Jump gets re-overtaken. Brilliant move by the McLaren driver. And Forrest Jump sitting in sixth. And the championship slipping away. Syndro first to get a penalty. We, Martin Tesco, Mille deal must have came together on the first lap as they both pit together. We look further down the order, and it looks like Zibat is virtually pushing Shotmaker through these corners. These twists and turns, but he runs it a bit wide. But he's still there with him, isn't he? Oh no! Mikhail! Oh no! Mikhail is gone! He's got no front wing! And a virtual safety car! But this might be it! We might be watching Mikhail's championship hopes and dreams go! Earn uh, if I could get an update on what happened there because I wasn't watching it. I saw the yellow flags and I thought, oh no. I locked ahead and I was like... And here we go, riding on board with the rear wing of Milk Cart, but we're not for long as he gets overtaken by Young Leader. And into that swooping left-hander, he gets nicked by Milk Cart. Young Leader does, and they make contact, and that was, um, I think that was a desperate attempt to try and stay. Um, I'm just trying to find Marshy putting Beast Plays under a bit of pressure. 
But at the moment, apart from Weimar and Tesco meal deal, there doesn't really seem to be a lot going on. To the right-hand side of the track, you can see Marshy trying to find a way past the Mercedes driver and around the outside. Well, that's the only viable option, but it works for now. We ride on board with the rear wing. The RS flap open. That's going to give him a few kilometers an hour. More straight line speed, but a slipstream. Four beast plays. Might see him send something into turn one. Not quite. Marshy's got the position for now. Of time to make an overtake into the corner. Keeping it in the track limit. Keeping it very smooth. We got yellow flags. And that's Zirbati. Retired from the session. The first retirement. DRS again for the McLaren driver on the run down to 27. Will he be able to get past around the outside? Mm, yes, I think he will. And he's going to pick up DRS once again. And that should help him see out the move on Beast Place. Unless Beast Place has got something up his sleeve, which clearly it does. Straight line speed and a half from the Mercedes car. My oh my, that is a rapid vehicle. In a straight line. That Mercedes, that was incredible pace to be able to stay ahead of the McLaren. But it surely won't be long until Coys gets ahead. Forest jump though is getting closer. But well, we just ride on board with him as Mikhail gets past Syndro. I don't. It's like Forest Jump just doesn't have the confidence in some of these corners. To be fair, I don't either. It's an absolutely horrific track to drive on. But we can see these three. And they will start getting into a battle with themselves at this point down the inside. That's a really, really interesting move at that point in the track. Has it paid out? It nearly has, and it has. He's past Beast Plays now and up into the podium position and Beast Plays really dropped off there as he got overtaken and here comes Forrest Jump again clinical for him to get past and he does so on the inside momentarily but they're side by side DRS really really helping Forrest Jump close down on Coys as well and nearly going into the back of him I'm sure he wouldn't but look at how much more pace that he has than the McLaren. When he's got no DRS, the McLaren's just got absolutely nothing in the straights. And it might be a double overtake on the McLaren driver. It looked like Beast Place was going to go for it on the inside. Really twitchy on the rear end from the McLaren. And I think he has been double overtaken. Unbelievable. Unprecedented scenes here. Beast Plays and Forrest Jump tried to power down the street. Beast Plays covering off a move from Coys. But this is unbelievable because Forrest Jump was fifth. Beast Plays was th at third and Coys was... I, don't, I didn't see him retire. There's been so much going on with this battle. Mikhail is out of the session. And, and for his championship hopes and dreams, he won't even pick up second. It's third, and I think, yeah, I think he was the one who retired in the pits, not Milk Cart. They both retired at the same time. Milk Cart says Mikhail turned into me and DNF'd. I don't know. I seriously don't know. Rainer's shown some very decent pace. Much faster than him in qualifying. Marshy eyeing up a move on Beast plays. Not going for it, but he's going to get another helping of DRS down this straight. But, I mean, it's just devastation. For Mikhail. For since I've commentated on this league, second season in a row. But considering his <laughs> Discord nickname, which is second again, I very much so think he's have gone past it. Rayner is going to slow them down. Young Leader gets a five second time penalty. That's going to help uh, with Red Bull's case in the constructors. Well, here we go. Four racing laps. Rainer just needs to hold on. Forrest Jump needs a miracle. Coys goes into the pits and we're back racing once again. Forrest Jump behind Rainer on the run down to turn one. Rainer's got a good launch away and I think he's securely into the lead. Forrest Jump's going to need slipstream after slipstream after slipstream if he wants to even stick close to the rear end of the Ferrari that's in front of him right now. Coys drops down to seventh and Tesco Meal deals ninth, uh, eighth now finally unlapping himself. We look further down the order, is there anything much going on? It doesn't look like it at all. And at the moment, I'd be a little bit afraid that even if Reyna somehow finishes, ends up being like spinning around, Coys wouldn't even overtake him. And that would mean that he could drop down to sixth place and still be stationary on track and have time to get back going again. Then he wouldn't even drop to eighth because Tesco Mildred is like a lap down on these cars. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous how the grid's set up. 
Ernst just told me that Rainer's championships guarantee this is only eight drivers. If he finishes eighth, how many? So he gets four points. You're right. But it's not guaranteed, is it? Because if he, if he, if he spins and if he crashes, if he crashes, oh, and am I right? If he crashes, he doesn't get the points. And here's Forrest Jump. Forrest Jump needs to be the one who capitalizes on this now. And then he, he just absolutely needs this to go his right way. And honestly, I'm sat here and I'm thinking, there's no way it does. There's no way it does. But I'm sure Forrest Jump's got the belief. And I'm sure Rainer's got the belief that he's going to absolutely cruise him. Flipping away, was it all too much for Forrest? I think there was just nothing he could do going into this race realistically. With the consistency that Rainer has as well. DRS enabled. Then Rainer is there, but he's got to defend against Rainer's teammate, Young Leader, as well. And this is where it's going to become difficult for Forrest Jump. He at least wants to finish second in this race. He at least wants to finish the race, I'm sure. But Rainer, five tenths ahead. Forrest might be able to get past. He might not be able to get past. But the championship is nearly over. The fight is nearly done. And after a valiant comeback from Mikhail, which was shot down by Milkheart this race. So much bad luck. A bad omen that Alfa Romeo car has been for him. And I'm sure he'll be happy to start next season without it. Hopefully, for his sake. Forrest Jump, captain consistency in the Red Bull car. And he's done. He's just really rarely set a foot wrong. I can't actually think of a time when he has in the car. Maybe he's not as fast, but he's a hell of a lot more consistent than a lot of the drivers in this league. But Rayner, I mean, he's, he's like the full package he's quick and he's consistent and as of this point he's about to go back to back in championships i mean it's been an absolutely brilliant fight one more chance with drs down into the final corner for forest jump can he make the lunge does he have to make the lunge no he doesn't does he want to make the lunge yes he's pushing rainer through the final corner but it's been an absolutely brilliant battle it's been a lot closer than anyone thought it would be but Rainer has won the Aurora Racing League Championship and he is champion of the world. Forrest Jump will finish second and it was a really close battle with those two at the end. Short Maker rounds out the top three, rounds out the podium places and joins his teammate on the grid. But it's celebrations for Rainer for the second championship in the row. Coys snatches the fastest lap. On the last lap as well, 6th, but he does get that extra point for fastest lap. But Rayner, this man, has done everything he needed to do this race. It's been a brilliant drive from him all season, and he adds another win to his tally. He adds another championship to his collection, and the Argentinian has won it all. Always picks up driver of the day. For me, my driver of the day would have to be totally no pro, I think. At least. But who cares? I'm sure this man doesn't. Champion at Jeddah. Champion of Aurora Racing League. And he celebrates with the gritty. What a fitting way to finish it all. Podium celebrations, but they're a lot more special than normal. Defeated Forrest Jump, but I'm sure he's happy he was just there for the ride. Brilliant battle with Rainer at the end there. And they share the podium with Shawmaker.